you could say Northeast Montana is a fairly remote area. That's a Warren joke. That is a total Warren joke. Hi, I'm Tony Fast's daughter. I'm Tony Fast's daughter. I'm Tony Fast's daughter. Our family has been blessed to farm in Montana for over a hundred years now. And it wouldn't be possible without the great team we have and blessings from our Savior, Jesus Christ. Morning, windmill. Hey guys, welcome back. Well, we had a pretty nice warm Sunday yesterday and back to it again today. Looks like the winter we really turned color. Low spots aren't so green anymore, so we'll try and get our peas finished over west. Dad's got probably 160 acres that are already there. I'm cutting barley at home. I'll we'll finish that barley and then cut the oats that are here as well today, hopefully. And then we'll bring Dad's combine home and we'll get his uh, his machine cleaned out and ready to cut winter wheat. I think. That's all subject to change though. Right now, heading over to uh, go desiccate some lentils. Well, it looks like we we're a tad bit late on desiccating. We wanted to do this last Saturday, but it got a little too warm out by the time we got done with the other field. These green spots is what we need to get to dry down. And this is like, basically we're swathing this field with chemical it's not systemic. The chemical does not move through the plant. It just causes whatever it hits to dry out. It just makes those cell walls pop open so that the moisture can escape. No effect on the seeds that are in the pods or nothing. It just dries out the green spots so that we can go harvest it. These look really nice too. I would guess they're in the low to mid 20s on yield, which is pretty great for lentils here. Hey. Nacho gets to put a new spout on. The new auger. And it has lights, easy slide out wheels, more lights. There's lots of lights. And it's longer. Okay, so we got the auger hooked up and we spread the wheels out and we're about to raise it up. Nacho put the cone out there on the end the downspout so i now have nacho's phone number so if it falls in the bin i know who to call <laughs> and he can come pull it out that's a good charger That switch is on. board is where the auger was the blue auger that's how much longer this one is so that'll be nice you seem happy at least with the controller it, yeah because I, I know which direction I'm gonna write directions in and out because I'll be confused simple mind it's only four buttons sweet yeah new paint is always fun 
Really? It wasn't that fun it wasn't to take that it? wasn't moving the wheels out. Yeah. <laughs> New paint stick. Alright. Auger set up. First load. Yeah. I'll let me get there. Third day of pea harvest going smooth. Or in the combine. <clears throat> Team waiting with the truck. We keep the grain car duty. To the combine and the grasshoppers. The hail damaged barley. Lots of lots of heads, missing kernels here, and lots of grasshoppers taking their place in the grain tank. So there's that. Well, I have a full combine and a full semi, full truck. So I'm gonna go dump the truck and eat some supper, and uh, you wanna see what see what this looks like up here. Thank you. 
Yeah, we got a grasshopper problem again in Montana this year. Yeah, that's all grasshoppers. I'm not so sure they intend for you to dump into a semi anymore with a combine auger. That is a long drop. Looks a lot better in a taller grain car, that's for sure. Well, here's the last pass of this first quarter. We're going to jump over there and cut that uh, barley around the cornfield, but look at the yellow along the edge of this canola. That is all grasshopper damage. That's chewed all the leaves off, and that's just stems left. I'm telling you guys, grasshoppers are uh, quite costly this year. Well, there's the air seeder corn. Yeah, it's kind of hard to see from in here, but there are a few tassels popping out, and I see some ears starting to form down there. So. We have a late frost, we just might make it. Morning, windmill. Morning, Tim. What have you been doing? We filled two bins. You haven't even moved your auger yet. I've been screwing around. Stop it. I was cutting out hailed out barley, okay? We were cutting peas. I was cutting out hailed out barley. Three of us were cutting peas and we filled two bins. <laughs> yeah, but one guy filled one bin here. Oh, you did fill it, huh? Yeah, <laughs> and, there's, and there's a full truck. Okay, we'll give you credit then. <laughs> there it goes. I wonder if they can smell the oats over here. They sure spend a lot of time at this end of the pasture. Combine's cleaned out. Time to go combine some oats. See how these do. I'm excited to see what yield's gonna be. They look pretty good. Going in pretty quick. Look nice and big too. Bigger than the seed we planted, I think, but we'll see. See what the test weight is on them. Should be a really good test weight with all that light rain we had in July. So the oats are running about 42, so my monitor is showing for an average, and uh, it's really nice cutting with the second combine. And the grain cart again. That just speeds things up. So just a few more passes left and we've got this 80 acres of oats or 75 acres of oats done. We'll be starting winter wheat soon. That is it for the oats. And you can see the difference between higher moisture ground, this bottom is always really good, and just ran out a little bit of moisture in June. So we're cutting mid 20s, where this spot, mid 20 average, and in this spot it's probably in the 50s. So just that one rain short in June to be in a really good crop, but considering no sub moisture, we got a good stand in the fall, got a shower. 
late August last year, so we got the winter lead off to a good start. And uh, yeah, 50, 62 bushel, 63 bushel. So just a little shorter than what I should be a runaway, but happy with the crop we got. We'll take it. And there's more hail damage on the other end like there was on the hay bar at least. So get that adjusted. Uh, we'll leave it spots for the adjuster to come out and check that. So that's what's going on now. Well, we don't always get meals in the field, but we do look quite a bit when we're close to home, so meal wagons here. What'd you bring me? A salad and some bread Ooh. and some cake. Some homemade sourdough bread? Yeah. All right. Here you have to choose a pop you want. Ooh. I'll take a Coke. Okay. See ya. Thank Love you. Ya. Love you too. So here we are. I guess it's the fourth day of harvest and we already went through four crops. Peas, oats, barley and now winter wheat. Nice. Things are going well. That's Tim. I think he's YouTubing. Well, I thought uh, I'd make it to the end of the day on fuel, but I was wrong. Um, asked the guys on the radio how long they thought with zero bars on my cage it would last. Tim said 45 minutes, but I didn't know when it started. It was more like 45 seconds. Turned the combine around, <laughs> jammed the sickle up in some green weeds, shut the machine off, hopped out so I cleaned my sickle off, and the combine shut off, so whoopsies. Luckily, I had a little time to cool down and it wasn't in the middle of a pass, so... Alright, waiting on uh, Tim to come back with the service truck. He's taking the loaded truck back to the bins now. Well, it started right back up, so that's good. It's 20 after 10 on a Tuesday night. What are we doing, Tony? All 
ran out of fuel because these things are so fuel efficient that I lost track of how many days I cut my full tank of fuel. <laughs> and what do you think, Nacho? I'm out. You're out. <laughs> I was that close to being done with the field. Dad's yeah, just catching the last liver. That's uh, it. I think, unless something crazy happens on the way back to the yard for the first day of winter wheat harvest, 2022. 300 and... 30, 40 acres of still cut. And 80 acres of barley, a lot for lunch. That's working all right. Uh, we should finish winter wheat tomorrow. We've got a half section and a quarter to do yet, so three total quarters. We'll get that done tomorrow.